The idea for Visual SP is to bring the information as close as possible to the users, with the end result that it increases adoption and reduces support tickets. The result on investment of Visual SP is demonstrated in analytics, which I'll talk about later. So the way I brought this panel up over here is clicking on this icon. Now this icon would be your company icon. Currently this is Visual SP, but this would be your icon that somebody would click on and they get to all the information that you want them to get to. Starting off here with some onboarding tasks and some additional information. Now this experience remains the same no matter where they go. So they could be in the SharePoint portal right here, same thing, your logo is there. They click on it, information appears. Notice that this information is gonna be context sensitive to what they're looking at. So this is the SharePoint site directory. If I was here, this is the SharePoint communication site. If I'm in Yammer, same thing. I see my company logo, I click on it, and this is a Yammer specific thing. Planner, same thing. And this would be for any application for Microsoft 365 and also for Dynamics 365. So same thing here. In this case, I have, I'm in an opportunity. I see a logo. Now in this case, it's a Dynamics logo, but assume this was your company logo. I click on it and I see Dynamics specific information. Once again, very specific to where I am. So I'm looking at an opportunity. I would get information about opportunity and that's it, nothing else, okay? Let's come back over here. Of course, the question becomes, where does all this content come from? Well, we supply a lot of content from Visual SP, so you don't have to start from scratch. Let me click on some of these things. So for some onboarding tasks, for example, having an intranet homepage tour that comes up automatically for your users. Welcome to your intranet. Next, here's the intranet home. Find anything, right? And automatically clicked on the waffle here and it's showing me this is how I can get to the apps. And here you go, it's this time it's uh, highlighting it, it's putting a border around it, showing me the app bar. And I'm gonna show you how all this stuff is configured. So this is, is a sample walkthrough that comes directly with the uh, system, okay? Now, I'm sure you wanna see exactly how this is configured. So this is the one that I clicked on. I could go into Enable edit mode, which of course admins can only do for Visual SP. Uh, that would be you. So if you're the admin and you go into the edit, and this is the editing module. So here I can edit everything and anything about the walkthrough. I'll go into walkthrough builder. Here are the different steps. Very easy to manipulate and change the order. And if I go into uh, something specific, let's say the app bar, this is the actual information that showed up, right? And it was easy as clicking on adding a border and adding a highlight for it to show the border and highlight. And if you don't remember, let me show you again, do a preview. Here's the app bar step. Okay, let me make additional steps so you can see how easy it is. So I'll go down, say add a step, added a step nine, select an element. I'll go ahead and say, let's point to the leadership team, use it say leadership team page instead of site. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's add a border around it. Okay, so the border uh, color I can change to whatever I wanted to. I'll just leave it like it is right now. Click on preview from here. And here it is. Here's how simple it is to just point to any element on the page to be able to point to that. Now, if the element itself moves, and that goes for any page, any site, uh, doesn't matter, Dynamics, SharePoint, or even your custom web applications, if the actual element itself goes to a different location at some point, not a problem at all because the walkthrough will self-adjust and point to the new location, okay? That's how easy it is to make walkthroughs, your custom walkthroughs. Just You can start from scratch also, adding a help item, starting from scratch, and I can uh, choose one of the templates that we have provided, or you can start from scratch, go into say, I want a walkthrough, walkthrough builder, and start building your walkthrough from scratch. Or we recommend, because we supply so many walkthroughs, you can go ahead and take one, like the one that I was showing over here. You can 
easily save this as a template or copy as new. And this is how quick it was to make a copy. Now I can go to the walk to builder, delete the stuff that I don't want and make new steps just like I was showing before. So very, very easy to make these interactive guided no code walkthroughs. Another way to show the same panel like this is by using this tab over here. Okay, and same thing appears in Dynamics and any other web application. So you can have this tab positioned anywhere as an admin, and then it would stay there for all of your users. Now, if it's in the way, your users can also change the location of the tab, put it anywhere they want it to, and it would remain there for them. Okay, I'll go ahead and put it here, click on it, exact same kind of functionality that I would have had if I clicked on my uh, company's logo, which would be here. Okay, so let me click on a few of these items over here as, as well. Creating activities in Dynamics. Now, this is a video. Uh, I can pop it out. I can watch it as a user. When I'm done, uh, click on the X. But this way, I can have it side by side as I'm actually doing the work. A bunch of these videos and sample content like that. Actually, this is actual content that you would get that you can you can put your own logo here if you wanted to. You can customize it as you wanted to also. We give you all this content and then we keep things updated as well. So users get the same experience uh, with the tab and or your logo in place of the question mark where that used to be uh, everywhere they go in every Microsoft 365 Dynamics 365 application. Now, keep in mind that it's not just Microsoft Di and Dynamics 365 uh, in any of your own portals also. So this is a WordPress-based portal. And same thing, I have the Visual Speed tab right there, which once again can be customized to be whatever you want it to be. Okay, so it works on any web application, not just Dynamics and Microsoft 365. I'll give you a quick view over here too. I'll go ahead and say, Refresh, you see, this is another contextual experience. This is Visual SP as well at work. So it's showing the uh, the site overview button, which I placed over here. I click on this as a user and it would give me, in this case, just an onboarding walkthrough. So now this is driven by uh, me clicking on the button. This kind of walkthrough can come up automatically also, or I can do it like that. Okay, once again, Managing these things, super simple. You go in here, you find the item, and then you go ahead and uh, edit the item, just like I've shown before. Coming back here, let me click on the tab again and show that all this content that I've been showing over here, we supply this content. Once again, you can change any of this stuff over here, anything that we have supplied, uh, you can create your own. Let me show you some additional content here. So this is a quick tip sheet telling people how to add a page to your site, something that everybody needs to know how to do. So it's right here, right? Or adding web parts. How do I get to the benefits portal? Something, this would be a type of an item that you would provide in here. So let's say there's a benefits, benefits portal link on the top and you want people to know how to get there. So you would put in, hey, click on the benefits portal link and here's what you, you would see. Right, so things like that would be interspersed where you have your content, you have our content, and everything is there at a context-specific level. Uh, so once again, if I am, for example, at Yammer, if you're using Yammer, and I click on the tab or the question mark where it used to be, and I see all this content, which is Yammer-specific. If I'm in Planner, then I see Planner-specific content here, right? So very context specific, same thing in Dynamics also. If I go from opportunities to leads, now within leads, the content I have, now this is blinking here, showing me that there's some new content. Okay, in this case, I can see what is the new content. I can see all this content, which is leads specific before I was seeing the opportunity specific content. And as I was saying, you can have the walkthroughs also come up automatically. There's one here. So if I go to accounts, this is a pre-built walkthrough that came up automatically, helping me onboard as a user. Right. So in here, I'll click on play. So this is an embedded 
video. In this case, this is the video from our CEO welcoming me. I click on next and now it's showing me it has automatically clicked on the plus button, put a border around this content is showing that this is how I can quickly create records. And now show me the navigation bar and so forth. So a lot of these kind of walkthroughs and additional content we provide you so then you can go ahead and change it as needed or just leave it. It's up to you. More than 1,500 pieces of content and growing on Microsoft 365, Dynamics 365, and more. And all the content, uh, by the way, can be targeted to specific scopes. Meaning if I am in Dynamics and I say, you know, I need the uh, manage accounts to only be visible to specific types of user. I'll go and edit over here and there's the scoping and targeting. So this is the Dynamics sc specific scopes, Dynamics roles. I can go ahead and pick one or I can go ahead and start typing any specific one. I can do that for URL filters, browser filters, and so forth as well. Same thing if I'm, let's say, in SharePoint here. I come to a specific item and I want the add web parts to only be visible to, let's say, editors. So the same thing here, I come down and there's SharePoint scopes and permissions. So I go ahead and pick the specific one that I want. We already have all the content that we provide security trimmed. So it's already targeted to the right audience, but you can manage it, you can change it around as you need it also for your own audience. In addition to onboarding tasks, uh, walkthroughs, and the things that I've shown so far, there's also the functionality to have announcements through the announcements bar. So I have one open here, let me show you. In this case, this announcement bar, let's say has come up automatically. It's got my company's logo, it's got the announcement telling me when the meeting is taking place, and I can click on learn more to get more information. Uh, the way things like that are scheduled, this in here is this one. So if I click on the edit, go down here. This is how it's scheduled here. I can say, let's have it automatically come up. Uh, in this case, first three times. I can also just say one time, whatever I want over here. And then exactly when it should be coming up. So what's the start date? What's the end date? When the announcement bar should come? And then of course I can once again target it to specific audiences, specific roles, and that I can do for any application as well, right? So then only certain people would see it and not everybody would see that. Uh, so a great communication mechanism, the actual editing of the announcement bar, very easy, just text over here. I can make it bigger also and just put the text in, uh, make the button go wherever I want it to go, put my logo, and anything else that I want to do because it is a rich HTML uh, section over here that I can put whatever content I want, change my branding, of course, to whatever is suitable for my company and go from there. So that's a really good way to put announcements, you know, anything that's coming up, a meeting that's coming up and so forth. Also, when within the system, it's very easy to look for stuff. So if I'm looking in the planner, how to build my plan, Create plan, here we go. I see it, the content right there, right? If I'm even looking for things that are not here, so a SharePoint page, okay, well, I didn't find it here. I can search the whole library of items. I can do a search all help items. This is the back end view, which shows all of the content. So it's gonna show content across various applications. And I can just click on that uh, specific one as well to get to that content as a user. So many different ways for people to get to the content that they're looking for. In fact, this button can also be hooked up to your knowledge base. So if you have another knowledge base in SharePoint or ServiceNow or some other place, you can this can be hooked up to send this query to that location. So then your users would get information from your own knowledge base as well. Let me show you some examples of inline help you can create. So you see this contact support? This link over here actually is using Visual SV. If I click on this as a user, the dialog comes up with my company logo. 
and it's telling me, hey, I can take you to support. Now, this could be ServiceNow or whatever support system you have. It would take the user there. So you're embedding this link directly in the interface. And if you're wondering how easy or not easy it is, uh, this is the item that shows this. So I'm going to edit. And the way this works, it's an inline help right there. Okay, So I can just say, let me select the element. This is the element selected over here. And I'm just going to relative to that, just move it around. So you can simply just move it around and uh, showing two of them right now over here. But I can click on use it. And that's basically just place it wherever I want it to be save it and it would just stay there so you moved a little bit so once again i click on this and the information appears here let me show you another example of that and uh, this was planner was just rolled out for my company okay i and people are frustrated thinking well how do i search all this content here there's no search functionality you see this button over here uh, this is using visual sp so I put this here because the users were complaining, they were opening up tickets. So I used Visual SP to put this button here. And now if someone comes here for the first time, let's say it starts pulsating like that. If I click on this, it would go ahead and guide me saying, okay, go ahead and click on the filter and then go ahead and put in your keywords just like that. See, it's working. So this is also a contextual experience. This is a button in this case. That here was a link. And there's other stuff you can do. So for example, you can put a, here we go, inline help icon like that. See? So this would appear only for admins so they can customize their logo if you want them to. Uh, completely optional, obviously. But these are the kind of things you can do pretty easily with uh, Visual SP to put these kind of icons and buttons and links wherever you want to draw people's attention and to provide them help at their moment of need within their own environment. Now, as far as understanding the ROI for your uh, Visual SP investment, of course, you'll want to know what's going on. So here's the backend analytics for Visual SP. Now, these are some actual figures from a customer. Of course, it's anonymized here showing how many items viewed, persons, uh, hours saved, savings and productivity. And we can provide the formula for all these things if you want, just let us know. Here it's showing exactly which applications the clicks are happening and where are people interacting with Visual SP, where they're getting help. So it's got Microsoft applications, but also has things like Salesforce and other custom applications are here too. You have the searches. This is one of my favorite where you can see exactly what people have been searching for. I can see, for example, the word billable. Someone searched for that or actually a bunch of people searched for that specific word. So there's definitely people who are looking for some data and they were right here at the Microsoft 365 start page in this case, looking for that. And this was the date when they were looking. Right, so you can get some really good metrics and understand the behavior of users. This is uh, backwards. You're looking at <clears throat> exactly what people are clicking on. You can get uh, expand that as well. Clicks by help item. Exactly what type of items are being used. The browsers are used. A lot of that stuff is available here. And that's where you determine exactly what the ROI for Visual SP is. Our customers tell us this is how they're able to justify uh, having a contextual microlearning system like Visual SP into their environment, cutting down on tier one support and also while increasing user adoption. Now, you're wondering probably how do you deploy Visual SP and if that's difficult to do. Well, within SharePoint, it would be just a deployment of custom action. Okay, Within Dynamics, if I go to this one, it's a deployment of a managed solution. So you upload the managed solution. It would have your ID in there. We would give it to you, and it would just work. Now, in other applications, like uh, have this custom application, WordPress-based, any kind of custom application you have, if you have back-end access to it, then you can easily 
we would provide you a one-line JavaScript. You could put it into the uh, application and it would just start showing up Visual SP, just like that. And uh, the buttons and whatever else you have configured, everything would show up just like that. Now, in applications where you cannot deploy like Planner, Yammer, there is no deployment mechanism. And you might have additional applications like that where you cannot deploy, right? So for those applications, you can have a browser extension we would provide you. And it would work just like the other way. It would not be anything different, uh, but it would provide the same kind of functionality with the browser extension in that case. Best way to get started by contacting us is just go here on our visualsp.com site. You can schedule a demo start a free trial or just go and uh, contact us here and then we can take the next steps thanks for watching and uh, we hope to see you soon thanks